In this unit, we will introduce the central limit theorem, which gives the distribution for a sum of random variables and the sample mean of some random variables. We will also look at how to deal with the transition from a discrete distribution to a continuous distribution by applying a continuity correction. Consider the following situation. We have a discrete uniform distribution which takes values from 0 to 100 inclusive. We then select lots of samples of size 20 from this distribution and calculate their means. The histogram shows the distribution of the means of these samples. Superimposed is a normal distribution with the same mean as the uniform distribution, but with the variance equal to the original variance divided by the sample size. You can see that as we increase the sample size from 20, all the way up to 100, and then 150, and then all the way up to 200, we can see that the distribution of the sample means moves closer and closer towards the normal distribution. This result is called the central limit theorem. Let's state this more formally. Suppose we have a random sample x1 to xn from a distribution which has mean of mu and variance of sigma squared. Then the distribution of the sample mean becomes closer and closer to a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n as the sample size becomes larger. Note that we are using capital X bar as we are talking about the distribution of all the sample means rather than one particular value. And so for large n, the distribution of the sample means is approximately normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. And the distribution symbol with the dot above and below indicates approximation. You can also show that this result is exact and not approximate when we're sampling from a normal distribution. And you could prove this using MGFs. Now the question is, how large does n need to be for this approximation to be good? We could say 30, but the truth is it depends on the skewness of the distribution we're sampling from. Now we can use this result to calculate probabilities involving sample means from a distribution. Let's have a look at a little example. Suppose the distribution of ages in years of UK actuaries has a mean of 44.2 and a standard deviation of 9.1, and a random sample of 100 such actuaries is taken and the mean age is calculated. What is the approximate probability that the mean age in the sample is less than 43? Well, first of all, notice the keyword approximate. This lets us know that we're going to use an approximation to calculate this probability. Note we're not told what the exact distribution of ages is, and nor do we need to know using the central limit theorem. Well, we require a probability of the sample mean. So first of all, we need to use the central limit theorem to get its approximate distribution. X bar will be approximately normally distributed with the original mean, which is 44.2, and the original variance, which will be 9.1 squared, divided by the size of the sample, which is 100. We require the probability that X bar is less than 43. Standardizing this gives us the probability that Z is less than 43, take away the mean, 44.2, divided by the standard deviation, which will be 9.1 over 10. Calculating this gives us the probability that Z is less than minus 1.31868. Recall that the probability of less than a negative number is the same as the probability of greater than the positive number, which equals 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 1.31868. Calculating this using interpolation gives us an approximate probability of 0.094. Note that when we calculated the probability, we standardized the result by subtracting the mean mu and divided by the square root of the variance sigma squared over n. So in general, x bar take away mu divided by sigma over root n is a standard normal distribution. Alternatively, it is possible to derive the central limit theorem in terms of the distribution of the sum of sample values, in which case the sum of x is a normal distribution with mean of n times mu 
and variance of n times sigma squared. And we can use this to calculate probabilities involving the sum. Once again, we could standardize this result. So sum of x, take away n mu, divided by the square root of n sigma squared is a standard normal. Let's have a look at an example involving summations. Insurance policies providing car insurance are such that the size of claims are normally distributed with mean 1870 and standard deviation 610. In one month, 50 claims are made. Assuming that the claims are independent, calculate the probability that the total of the claim sizes is more than £100,000. Note that the question doesn't say an approximate probability because the central limit theorem is exactly true if you're sampling from a normal distribution. Now we're interested in calculating probabilities to do with the total of the claim sizes. So using the summation form of the central limit theorem, we'll have the sum of xi's is normally distributed with n, which we're told is 50, times the original mean of 1870, and n times the original variance, which is 610 squared. We require the probability that the total is more than 100,000. So standardizing this result gives us the probability that z is more than 100,000, take away the mean, divided by the standard deviation. This is equal to the probability that z is greater than 1.50695. Using interpolation gives us a value of 0 0.06591. Finally, we're going to consider something called the continuity correction. If we were using the central limit theorem to approximate a discrete distribution with a continuous normal distribution, we need to be a bit careful. For example, the probability that x equals 5 is meaningful for a discrete random variable, but it isn't for a continuous random variable, since the continuous random variable takes an infinite number of values, and so the probability of being any one of them is as good as zero. So how do we deal with this? Well, suppose we have a discrete distribution which can take the integer values from zero to 10 inclusive, and we approximate this with a normal distribution. We can resolve the probability x equals five problem by bludging the x equals 5 bar to say that it goes from 4.5 to 5.5, i.e. we're treating x equals 5 as rounded to the nearest integer. And so in continuous terms, we could say that probability x equals 5 is equivalent to the probability that 4.5 is less than x is less than 5.5. How would we deal with the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5? Well, it includes probability x equals 5, so the whole of the bar, which we have said goes from 4.5 to 5.5, and it includes values greater than that. So the continuous equivalent of this would be the probability that x is greater than 4.5. Finally, how would we deal with the probability that x is greater than 5? Well, it's not equal to 5, so we don't include the bar of 5, which goes from 4.5 to 5.5. We just need to be greater than that bar, which means the equivalent continuous probability is the probability that x is greater than 5.5. Here's a summary of what we covered in this unit.